Ready? Yep. Here we are in sunlight and you can see it's it's direct sunlight. You can see by the shadows and on my fingers onto the screen. And this is my Kindle with a nice book on TFT LCD. And here is a, a paper by John Ryan here on this one. This is our screen. It's, it's not Acer screen. It's Pixel it Cheese screen. And this is my $2,000 Toshiba Transflective LCD laptop, the Toshiba R600. So that's a comparison of how they look in direct sunlight. So can you say something about that screen, what, what it is? Oh, this is, this is um, a transflective screen. You can turn the backlight on and off. And it's, it's something that really washed out. But I bought it trying to see, you know, what, yeah. really trying to figure out, you know, really what, what we should be doing. Because I, I'd like, I wanted to make better screens that were more easy to read in any yeah. environment, and so I wanted to see what the state of the art is by everybody else, and that's that. And I think this is more readable than that by any and stretch. Right now, right now we're in direct sunlight, but people usually they prefer going in the shade, and it actually performs so, even better in the shade. Yeah, right? so let's take them into the shade. Yeah. Hey, John, so could you carry this one? So here, back in the shade. And did you uh, did you actually use your screen to read uh, books or, or lo like lots of text? And yeah. So this is the e-ink screen now, where um, you know there. And that's the Toshiba screen. Maybe we can hold them all side by side. Where I actually think in this one ours looks better. So you know, here I can change the. So fast update, and then I'm just going to try to change. But ha have you yourself had time yet to like? How much did you read on your screen actually? Um, and how long, for how long times? We use our own screens at the office. Yeah, so yeah. we've just had them for a week, so it's not really yeah. fair yet. But I've been trying to. I'm going to move from that to this um, this weekend. I hope is my goal. Okay. To start using this all the time. And right now there are only eight of these or something like that in the world. Yeah, seven or so, I think, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. And so how... There, the backlight's off now. Yeah. Very soon there's going to be a bunch more, and then another bunch more, and... That's right. I'm actually going to go look at the next batch, maybe even today. Because it's Saturday, but it's a work day here in Taiwan, because I got right. a long weekend. So can you say just a few things about what you fixed in the second batch? Oh, there were a couple of problems. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are small problems. It's hard to talk about your, your faults, but uh, there was a little bit of speckle. And, and some of the spacers were a little high because the, the density which which we printed the masks was, was higher than usual. So we had to knock down the spacers that basically hold the two substrates apart and the liquor crystals fill in there. And so the liquor crystals are a little thick. Yeah. That's why I think before I was saying the gamma was tuned for one yeah. versus the other mode, and so that's just because the liquid crystals were a little bit thick. Easy problem to So fix, easy but. is something that uh, you as engineers, you can just like oh, point very, out and say, we well, know what to do, and that's it. Very well understood. Yeah. You just put in smaller yeah. spacers. It's right. really simple. So this is totally, <laughs> totally ready for... It's just working. Yeah, we're going through, I mean, the usual working sample, uh, engineering sample, and customer sample. And then I've been talking to manufacturers, usually what they call it, when they put our screen into their yeah. unit, they call it A test, B test, C test, and they can ship on C test. But in discussions with them, they say, you know, if it's just a run-in change, that's their technical term, they said, maybe we could do faster. <laughs> so yeah. we're trying to get them out as quickly as possible. People right. are really interested and, and excited about the functionality yeah. that they bring. So, so that's great. And uh, touch, what, what would happen if we add touch? You can add touch uh, to this, uh, just like you can add touch to this. Yeah. What you do have to be careful about is using uh, anything that would be optical absorption, but there's, there's about 200 different touch technologies that, that yeah. an analyst I know is aware of, and many of them work very well with our, our screen technology. The standard resistive touch, which is, sorry to say it, the cheapest yeah. right now. Really, I think you actually have a screen. John has a screen like that um, yeah. here where he can show that.
But that's the worst one. It's it's bad for even normal screens. It really yeah. washes out the the screen. So certainly the iPhone has projected capacitance. Yeah. There's a lot of new novel touch solutions being shown both at Computex and at the SID Display Week yeah. show in Texas. How about week. if you add Wacom, for example? Would that make it so oh, that sure, you sure. don't have to add any layer on top so it looks exactly the same? Or? Yeah, Wacom, Wacom can, be, can look great as well as many others. There's yeah. uh, it's hard to really pick one to highlight, but there are there are many that only absorb say ten percent yeah. of the light here, and that's that's really yeah. ITL. Here's, here's. So that's, that's, what is that? We can't that's see a resist. That's a resistive touch. Is it off? No, no, that's, no. no the screen is actually <laughs> full intensity. If you go down the stairwell, maybe. Yeah, actually, if you way. come inside, you just screen. watch the step. Okay, you can actually yeah. see as we go over here. So that's what people have today. Something yeah, like so only about half of the light comes back through that. And the light that's being reflected off it is actually about the same intensity, so typically you get to see nothing. Yeah. Plus they have a lot of haze in the resistive. And here? So, and then here, this is how these guys look. And these are both, still both backlight off in the shade. So that's, that's why we say this is sort of like an e-paper look. The backlight's off here, it's dark in here. But I can turn the backlight on. And now it's, now it's bright and we can, you know, watch. And there's my, you know, right. the movies again, I guess. Oops. And uh, you call it 3QI because uh, there's a third mode, which was, what, well, did, what did it mean? Well, 3T is more a play, I think, on 3G. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you know, there's, it's uh, transflective, transmissive, and reflective, I suppose, is, is really okay. where we're at. So that's in, in shade versus, all right, I should open one of these, but. Um, right. What does 3T mean? Uh, that's the marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what does 3G mean? It's so marketing. 3G actually is, is sort of, um, it, it can mean whatever you want, and there's some sort of zen to that. Uh, it's, it's a play on 3G. If you think about the sort of the multiple generations of liquid crystal technology, it also refers, refers to the three operating modes that the screen goes through. And also, um, it refers to sort of a belief within our company of um, you know, having a balanced uh, set of goals within the company that actually include, you know, for example, as exemplified through our ongoing support of one laptop per child, you know, the, the multiple bottom line of having a successful business uh, that is also uh, good for the society that, that we live in. All right, thanks.